Hello and welcome to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. Today we're going to continue on with real-time rendering and we're going to take a look at what we got here in the real-time rendering GitHub repository. And we're going to basically start there where we ended off with the DirectX series. Basically we're going to write a shader and everything that finally now is going to draw multiple triangles that are going to make up a three-dimensional uh, model. So uh, let's take a look at what we got here. So basically uh, it's just a normal GitHub repository. So the first thing you want to do is you want to clone it by just copying the uh, the the uh, URL here, the git URL. Then we want to open up a CMD here in my GitHub projects directory and I want to say git clone. Uh, what? Why did, did it copy that? That is, that's not good. It copied something else because I probably pressed right click here. So uh, from scratch, git clone, like that. And this is going to download the full real-time rendering and we're done. Boom, we're ready. Now I want to open up this folder and I want to select it and I want to open this up with Riddle Studio Code to see what we got here. Because, uh, yeah, as you can see, we don't get any solution here. So we don't have a direct uh, Visual Studio project that we can use. So basically I've gone in and also uh, used Conan here. If you don't know what Conan is, Conan is a C++ package manager. Uh, if you don't have Conan installed on your system, you need to make sure to first install Python and to check if you have a working Python installation, try to enter Py. This should work. Uh, I cannot keyboard interrupt this, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, I cannot... Uh, Okay, go with Control C out of Python, but that's not the issue of that uh, idea. So Python needs to be installed, and you also need to be able to you run the pip command, the Python uh, package installer, or what it is called. And then what you want to type in to install Conan, pip install Conan. And it will uh, install it, but uh, on my system it says requirement already satisfied, because I have already installed Conan. Alright, so Conan is important that you can basically uh, load the packages and Basically, I'm going to depend on external packages. If you take a look at I'm using ASIMP, I'm using iNGUI, and I'm going to use Premake to generate the project, and it's important that you have uh, Conan installed so that everything works. So, right, the first thing that you want to do is you want to configure that project and get yourself a Visual Studio solution. So I'm going to open up a new terminal here inside of Visual Studio Code. I could just drag this up so that you can see it a bit better. And then what you want to run is you would run... Uh, oh. That is, has screwed up everything. Uh, you will run configure, and you have several uh, scripts here. So if you configure VS 2022 build debug and release, but we want to have a debug environment for debugging our code. And what you then want to do is you want to hit enter, and this will generate the full project. This might take a bit longer on your system because it might need to build all these dependencies that are uh, mostly coming from ASIMP, and this might take a while to. Uh, uh, to to basically download and install and be built on your system because it's automatically going to build everything. And if you take a look at this, it has generated a bunch of files, including the real-time rendering solution file that you can open up by just typing real-time rendering and tabbing through until you get the .sln here for solution. And this will automatically now open up Visual Studio itself. But you want to have Visual Studio Code open here because our shaders are going to be written in Visual Studio Code as well as the app directory that we're going to modify here. So you can see that we got some stuff in here and I'm GUI, INI, the DirectX compiler, everything supplied here in the repository. Yeah, and the first thing that I'm going to take a look at is uh, going to be the code base here so that you get an overview of what we're going to do here. So I'm going to open up the main.cpp file so that you see how everything is structured. All right, so everything takes place in this wwinmain uh, safe. And down here we have the real WinMain, it's just an, uh, a little wrapper around the WinMain save that makes it a bit safer to uh, throw exceptions and also see what exceptions were thrown. Alright, so how does um, this library work? So first of all, we need several initializations. So the first thing that this library needs is some initialization. So uh, we need to initialize the so-called directory watcher or directory watch. That is going to handle stuff that we can see later on, that it's very handy so that we can easily debug shader code and modify shader code during runtime. So basically, this has something to do with shader hot reloading. And after that, we're going to initialize DirectX 12, which might fail this dear watch should not. Of course, you need to shut down dear watch as well. So when the DirectX 12 initialization succeeded, I'm going to create a few uh, DirectX objects. I'm going to uh, create some common objects. I'm going to initialize a queue. 
a comment list or based on that queue and an upload buffer. The upload buffer, as you might know from the Dynamic Swift series, I like to have some, some automatic class that handles uploading. So next thing that I'm going to initialize is the W uh, is the window, the Windows window, and I'm just calling this RTR window, and I'm supplying the queue because I need the queue for the swap chain, and then I'm initializing the I'm GUI manager for that window. So basically, I'm saying I'm GUI, hey, init yourself on top of that window. Next thing that I'm going to do is I am in the application loop. So as long as my window can process events, so basically while the window is open, I'm going to do all of my rendering stuff. First thing that I'm going to check is if the window is uh, going to need some resizing. In case it needs it, I'm going to flush the queue two times because two frames in the flight, and then I'm going to resize the window. The next thing is basically my uh, begin to draw command. So basically, I'm going to ask my comment list to begin the render for the current back buffer of the window. And uh, the current state of the resource that we want to render to is the present state, because it was presented by the window. And the next thing that I want to uh, also import here is the CPU handle for the Windows back buffer, so the resource pointer and the handle pointer, or not pointer, but the, the handle, the descriptor handle. Then I'm also calling I am going new frame so that we can do some IMGUI rendering as well during our main loop. And uh, speaking of IMGUI, I'm showing the deeper the demo window here, so just that you can see that something is going on. And after that, I'm going to end my draw call. So basically, I'm telling my I'm going to manager to uh, render on top of that comment list or onto that comment list. Then I'm going to stop rendering uh, on the comment list itself, which is going to make sure that all resources are cleaned up properly. And then I can execute the comment list synchronously. So basically, this call is blocking until everything has completed. And then I'm going to present the frame uh, using the window present function. And in this case, I'm using vsync. After that, I'm just calling a nice little function, diewatch uh, refresh, that's gonna check if there are some changes to shader files, and if there are, um, they are automatically reloaded. Or basically, if something, it doesn't matter if it is really a shader, or if it, anything, you, I could support a hot reloading of anything that is inside of the project's runtime directory. And basically, uh, every uh, other object that might look for a change in the directory is gonna uh, ask the Daya watch and we need to call this refresh function here periodically. After that, I'm gonna do some shutdown stuff and yeah, that's it. So what happens if I run this code? Let's try this out. I hope uh, everything builds fine. I haven't tested this actually to get this newly from GitHub since I made some changes to the project. But it looks good for now. Yeah, it looks good. Should run without an issue after we've compiled. Generating code, looking good, looking good. And we shall be presented with a window. And inside of this window, we have this uh, I'm GUI demo. Oh, it's a bit laggy, but that is not the, the, the code that is the recording. All right, now it, it has settled a bit. Uh, so we have full I'm GUI support in here. We can open up anything that you know from my GUI and yeah, we are good. So let's minimize this and put this up here. We don't need this for now. And let's close this up. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to render something. This setup that I showed you all, uh, you can watch this in the DirectX 12 video series where I'm going to uh, tell you how this is all working. All right. So we want to write uh, or we want to draw uh, a model. So if we take a look at the app directory, I have this zuzen.fbx. Can I open this with, uh, no, not with Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go into the proper directory and I'm going to hope that the, that the Windows 3D file viewer has updated by now. No, I don't know why it's updating forever and I hate it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm open this up with MeshLab. It's also okay. I have 3D editors. And if you take, oh, not editors, but uh, 3D viewers. So you can, you can see we got this Zen model in here. And if you would inspect this, you can see that we have uh, 505 vertices and 986 uh, faces. So a small and nice little 3D model that is not too complex. And yeah, we want to use this. And you can see it's currently not rendering back faces. We don't want to have this. So yeah. That is uh, our model. So let's dive in and load this on uh, our project here. Actually, I want to move this into its own folder. So I want to have uh, a models folder here, and I'm just going to move the Susan and her license into that. 
All right. Good. So now we have basically moved Susan over to the models directory. And now inside the app directories, I also want to uh, create a uh, shader, shaders directory. And inside that, we want to write some shaders. So we're going to write a basic pixel shader.hlsl. Uh, or, yeah, I, I do want to have a other naming convention. Let's call this basic uh, ps. Let's copy this a few times over and rename it to basic vertex shader. And let's rename it to basic.hlsli uh, for our includes. All right. So uh, these are the three shaders that we're going to work today. And the first thing we want to do is we want to define a basic, uh, basic root signature. Signature, so like that. So the basic root signature that we want to work with for that uh, tutorial series. And uh, how do we define root signatures? Well, we're going to ask Microsoft specifying root signatures is the uh, nice little article that's going to uh, tell us everything about that. And what we want to do is we want to just take a look at how root signatures are defined. All right, so basically we have some uh, root flags uh, and we always want to have allow input assembler, uh, input layout, whatever that is. All right, so we want to take this one and just copy it in the first line and we are good. We are, don't need anything more yet. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to define how our vertex is going to look like. And uh, we're going to do this by defining a struct. So we're going to define the struct by calling it uh, vertex. So yeah, let's just call it vertex. All right. So inside of our vertex, we're going to have a float for position. Position with a semantic name as the position. So just a, a, a small little vertex position. I mean, there is actually more like the, like your V coordinates and stuff. But for now, we are just going to take the position and we are good with that. So just a position done. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to go into our vertex shader. And what uh, we want to do is we want to include the basic.hlsli to basically get all the finds that we have just written. And then we want to basically write a shader. So the output is going to be a vertex. I'm going to call it uh, base. Yes, let's call let's call it basic vertex shader like that. And the import will be a vertex in. Or we could like it is a keyword in vertex VTX. All right. So basically, this vertex shader um, is going to output a vertex and uh, it's going to take in a vertex. So for now, we're just going to uh, pass on the input vertex like that. Of course, we need to define the root signature, root signature. And this is our basic root signature like that. And this should conclude our very, very basic vertex shader. Let's copy this over to the pixel shader and let's change this from vertex to pixel shader. And let's also call this uh, float4 and let's call it SV target because now we in the vertex shader we want to output a color but the input will still be a vertex and currently I just want to return a bright white color for every uh, for every little uh, triangle that we get so we want to return a float for like that all right so this should be uh, good I think but we're gonna see so let's head over to Visual Studio and show you how we can import this. So first of all, we're going to uh, need to write our own pipeline state. And this is done in uh, this uh, framework or this, this code base basically by a special class or by writing an own class. And uh, let me quickly get my references up and ready because I don't remember how I implemented that. So basically, we want to have our own class. So we're going to have the class uh, basic rendering. I'm just going to call this basic rendering because it's going to be very basic. And this will extend the D3D pipeline state. So basically, we're going to take our own class and we're going to override the pipeline state. All right, so our class is going to have some functions and it's going to have some private attributes. First of all, we have a vertex and pixel shader. We need to store these shaders somewhere. So basically, I want to have some shader in here. So the vertex shader and the pixel shaders. I'm defining them down here. So these are basically my shaders. All right, so now after defining the shaders, I uh, want to also create a constructor because I need to populate them during the construction of the object. 
So let's basically now populate them somewhere in here. First of all, let's say my vertex shader and we need to give it a white string path and a white string entry point. Uh, as well as a type of shader, which is in this case a RTR shader vertex shader version 6.0. And I want to do the same thing for the pixel shader. But going to call it pixel shader. All right. So the file will be in uh, shaders. Uh, how did I call it? Basic uh, vertex shader .hlsl. And the other one will be in basic pixel shader .xlsl. .hlsl. .xlsl. Lol. Vertex shader, pixel shader. So this should create ourselves our shaders. And then we also need to override the constructor of the pipeline set itself, which basically just tells the uh, superclass which type of pipeline state we are creating. This is going to be a rendered state, a graphics pipeline state, not a compute state. All right, so constructor that loads shaders. All right, good. The next thing that we want to do is we want to write, override a virtual function. If I'm going to take a look at this with uh, Visual Assist, you can see that we have multiple here. So we have ours, one that we really need to override and one that we are allowed to. We're just going to take the one required. If we're going to need the other one, we're going to add it at uh, some, some, some time. All right. Uh, it's currently as protected so that it's a bit guarded. So let's paste it up here. All right. Move this in. Move this shit in. All right, I know how to tackle this issue because like Visual Assist doesn't like me in this case, but this is how you solve it. Just save it while it's in, then click out and don't save it. <laughs> it's like that easy. All right, so uh, basically this is going to be the function that is going to be called every time the pipeline state shall be modified. So basically here we uh, construct the pipeline state. The first thing that we need to do is we need to take a look at this manipulator and we need to basically check that uh, what was in my... Uh, I did copy that. Ah, so we want to check get the type and we want to check if this is really a graphics manipulator and if it's not I'm just going to return false and false indicates uh, wrong. Or we could also like throw an std exception and tell uh, unexpected pipeline state manipulator type type like that so basically here we're going to check the type and after we have checked the type it's safe to cast this uh, to a graphical manipulator cast to gfx manipulator so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say gfx gfx pso uh, manipulator no not pso uh, do, uh, oh yeah, it's all right. GFX is for graphics. I was a bit stupid here. And we're just going to call this uh, Manip. Or let's just call it PSO for pipeline state object. And this is going to be equal to cast myself to a GFX manipulator of the default supplied manipulator. And this is not safe. All right, and now we want to populate our uh, manipulator. So first of all, we want to set our shader. Set shaders. So we're going to set uh, call the set shader function. Uh, no, bind shader function on our um, on our uh, object here. First of all, we want to bind the vertex shader. So I want to bind my vertex shader, and then I want to bind my pixel shader. You can do this just like that. And now, basically, by calling these functions, the shaders are aligned. Now we need to set up the render target. And we do this by calling the uh, PSO again, and we're gonna say om set render target format for the first render target index zero, DXGI format R8, uh, BGA, RGPA unorm. So basically, the default format. Um, after that, we want to set up the uh, input layout. So basically how our pipeline state or our input is uh, defined in the uh, shader. We do this by IA add element. So we call that one. Then we want to give it a name and a format. The DXGI format, we're going to put this to full um, R32, G32, B32, A32 float because it's a four component float. Uh, as we defined it basically in this one here, so four component float. 
and the name is gonna be SV target. Uh, no, SV position, position. All right, position, good. That is how we want to do this. And basically what we're after that going to do is we want to return true because everything is set up. And you can see it is as easy as that. We just need to define what we really need. So this is how basically our PSO works. Now we can like minimize that or we could also go in and define a bit more. So you could basically also define our vertex in here. Let's do this. Now let's actually add a struct here, a public struct vertex. So that we also have a definition of a vertex, which is going to be float4, uh, which is of course not defined uh, from wherever this is coming, probably because I have somewhere directx math included. So uh, I'm just going to say uh, px, py, pz, pw, so basically in the position here. So defines vertex. Good. All right. So now let's actually take a look at uh, how we can use this one to render. So first uh, we need to have an instance of that, that is for sure. So basically we want to have custom rendering instance down here in our loop. So we're going to have a basic rendering, um, uh, just going to call this PSO or rendering PSO, like that. All right. Of course, we want to destroy this before we destroy anything else. So we want to destroy custom instances. But actually, I think we want to destroy custom instances like that. We want to destroy custom instances after the queue has been flushed down here. So like that, somewhere here. Do be sure that we are not destroying something that might be referenced. All right. So currently you can see that we have the show demo window here. I'm just going to keep this. So just keeping the I'm GUI demo. And what I want to do here is now I want to render a basic or render Suzanne. I don't know if she's spelled like that, but I hope so. So let's uh, actually bind our rendering PSO. So what we actually can do, we can call the bind function on this PSO and we can supply a comment list here. So list is our comment list like that or not what do you take an id 3d12 uh how is it not bind ah yes yeah, it's, it's different we are gonna ask our list to uh bind the pipeline state so it's the other way around so we do something like that list bind our rendering pipeline state yeah i, I did it directly twelve so and basically this function is going to return something, so we want to check if this returns true, and only if this returns true, we basically can um, render stuff. So how are we doing this? Uh, now basically the idea would be to just call draw, and we would say like 500, 5000, and we could draw stuff. But before we can draw stuff, we need to bind the, the vertices, basically. And maybe scissor rectangles and stuff. I'm not quite sure. We're going to get to it. So we need a way to load Suzanne. And there's currently a way to load Suzanne, but this way is uh, the, the way it's been loaded is currently not working. So we're going to need to adjust this for our uh, purposes of having four components since uh, ASIM that's going to be used for uh, loading stuff is uh, only having three component vectors. All right. So basically uh, what we want to do here is custom rendering instance. So basically here we want to do load to Zen. And basically we have a class that uh, handles models. So basically here we have our model uh, model container. So basically it is called a model context CTX and this model context gets a memory budget that we need to define. So I'm just going to give it 512 megabytes of memory for now. Um, and this context is going to be responsible for uh, drawing stuff. Let's be, let me actually put this up here because it's kind of common. All right, so basically what we want to do now is we want to uh, load Suzanne with that model context. So basically this context has a function that is called load model. And this is going to take a file path and an uploader. So an upload buffer that we just defined here. And it's returning a so-called RTR model info. So let's do this, RTR uh, or just model info. Zu, I, how is she spelled? I'm gonna need to make it look it up just in any sec. So Susan.fbx. FBX. So let's also call her Susan. 
And so then it's going to be equal to CTX loader model. We just want to say very quickly, if we don't have any, so then we want to throw an SCD exception, uh, cannot load Suzan, something like that. Uh, of course, she is in models, in the models subdirectory, and um, actually, uh, do I know if this code works? I don't know, I've never tried this out, actually. Let's see if it works, if my loading code is at least somewhat functional. And no, it's not. Cannot load Suzan. That is bad. Why can we not load Suzan? Let me actually call this MDL CTEX because I don't like the naming conventions here, which of course should be uh, model context destroyed somewhere. All right. And as again, my type to do to mistype models. So yeah, let's see if it uh, works now. We're still going to have the breakpoint there and there to just verify how everything goes. And nope. We have some issue. So something went totally wrong. Uh, first parameter is corrupted in post. So basically I'm calling this load model function. That is basically open up an ASM scene. And then it's going to extract the number of meshes, in this case one mesh. It's going to iterate over all these meshes. It's going to get a reference to that mesh, like that one here, which is going to tell us that we have 20 primitives, uh, that number of vertices and that number of faces, vertices, stuff, 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 faces here. And basically each face is going to have uh, three indices. And yeah, that's basically how this, uh, this SM stuff works. What I'm then doing is I'm uh, computing the index count, which is uh, 2,904, and the vertex count, which is also valid. Um, and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to compute uh, the size that I need for that, which is going to need to change, because basically um, we need a way to basically add a callback later on for that. Uh, we're going to modify this code later on because it's not working. It's currently just working for ASM style vectors, which is not good with alignment on the GPU. I don't know why, but they do it. So basically what we're going to, we can already change this a bit. So basically we can already put this like that. And what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to allocating memory on a internal buffer by calling this allocate function. Then I'm going to create a set out of these. So basically I'm specifying everything inside the set. So the name of the model, the vertex buffer, index buffer, the number of indices that we can later on use this mesh info to um, basically retrieve the information that we need for drawing. After that, I'm going to start copying data over. And I have two ways of copying. Uh, basically, this is version one. Just copy a plain buffer. And as you can see, uh, this is going to take the vertices. We're going to need to be going to. All right. So we can already change this because it's no longer uh, working this way of uploading. So I can actually explain it to you step by step. So first of all, we need to unsign char uh, vertex data pointer that is going to contain a pointer where we can copy our vertices so that they are able to be GPU copied. And I'm just going to put this as an unsigned uh, char pointer, basically to um, to show what's going on here. So uh, to be able to have proper pointer access. And I'm just going to reserve some upload memory on our upload buffer. And I'm just going to input the memory, memory size vertices. And I'm also going to check if that vertex data was all right. And if this vertex data was all right, we can actually copy on that. And every reserve operation needs to be kind of like completed with a commitment. So commit upload, I'm going to collect to call this. And this is uh, been done by calling the post buffer copy function. So basically, we want to post it. Actually, commit would be more nice. We can actually change this very quickly because I have Visual Studio Assist now. Mm, where is it? Retime rendering? No, it's in D3D memory, upload buffer. It's currently called post buffer commit, and I typically want to rename this to commit commit buffer copy. Done. 
rename this as well to commit texture copy, done. This is just making stuff a bit more nice from syntax way. So we're going to commit this upload. And we commit this by basically specifying a local memory pointer, which is our uh, vertex data. The local memory size, which is our memory size vertices. And a DirectX target resource, as well as a target offset. So the offset is going to be stored in the uh, set in the vertex buffer. Or basically, we already have it directly, so in the vertex... The vertex part, we can basically read out the offset, and this offset is going to tell us where to put it from offset-wise. This vertex part also contains a pointer to a buffer, which is not compatible because this is uh, this is a um, a return rendering construct, and we want to actually convert this return rendering construct to ID three D twelve resource pointer, which is an operator supplied there. This might have screwed things up, but I don't know why. And let's uh, now go into the copy function itself. So we're going to have, uh, during copy, we're going to have an offset, which is going to start at zero. And what we then want to do is we want to iterate over all vertices. So we want to start at zero. And we're going to end at as mesh um, uh, num vertices. And for each vertex, we want to uh, copy some data over to this uh, vertex data buffer. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to do a mem set. I'm just going to clear that full memory. Actually, let me clear this up on front so that we have everything initialized. So vertex data is going to be cleared into the memory, memory size vertices. All right, just like that. And then, then I can do a plain old mem copy to our vertex data at position i, or at, not position i, at offset. And what we want to do here is we want to supply a uh, source, which is going to be at our uh, vertices at position i, convert this to a pointer, and the copy size will be size of ai vector 3d. And then I want to increment my offset plus equals size of float times 4 just to hard code this quickly for this current use case. This function is going to change heavily in the future, um, this model loading function. It might uh, be some callbacks that are called on a per vertex base uh, and stuff like that. All right. So this should be the function for copying data. Let's rerun this and see where we're going to fail. We're probably going to fail somewhere now because it failed down here. It's going to fail up here as well. So let's see. Oh yeah, so good. So we fixed it. Basically, it did not call the operator correctly, the conversion operator. Just going to quickly fix that issue that I just saw here by basically preparing our buffer for being able to upload. And for that, we actually need to write a function into our write and rendering 3D models model context. And just want to have a nice function that is going to uh, expose our model buffer resource. Uh, I'm just going to do this by writing a function, an inline d3d uh, resource pointer get uh, geometry buffer resource uh, like that so a nice function retrieve uh, buffer resource and what I'm going to do is I'm going to return my geometry beta buffer and a pointer to that which has been automatically should be automatically converted like that all right good so now I can use that in the in the main buffer basically to um, uh, assert copy copy able state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call uh, yeah I'm gonna call MDS context get geometry better buffer and we're gonna say ensure a state. We're gonna give it our comment list and we're gonna get it a d3d12 resource state uh, copy destination. And we wanna quickly say uh, flush resource barriers in our comment list and then we wanna execute our comments list synchronously so that everything is good here. And what we want to do here is we want to upload data and restore buffer state. So uh, how is this going to work? We're going to basically uh, 
call on our upload buffer uh, the execute function. Is it returning something or is it actually waiting? Uh, do we have a wait function? Yeah, so execute and wait. Is this actually combined somewhere? Execute and wait? No. We just call execute and wait to make sure that everything is executed and uploaded. And then we basically can call our MD L context again and we're going to get the geometry buffer resource again and we want to ensure the resource state again. Now we want to use it as D3D12 resource state um, vertex and constant buffer and this might something uh, that is also not working. I am trying uh, to basically give it, actually I think we can give it two states. Resource state because I'm using the same buffer for vertices and indices, I'm not sure if this worked, but I wanted to try this out. So let's give it a uh, index buffer state here to uh, make sure that this is working. And we can see if it works. If it doesn't work, it's not a problem. We can quickly change it. So now that Susan has loaded correctly, we can take a look at her. And basically she has an index of zero and a count of one, which is completely correct. We could compare this to the model context, which is going to have a set. And basically the Susan is referencing into the set, basically to start at zero and have one in total. So now you can see we have a vertex buffer and an index buffer here, and we have an index count. Index, vertex. And now we can actually take this to render her later on. Let's just continue to see if everything else still works, which does not. Mm. Ah, yeah, that is our shader. <laughs> our shader did not compile. Where does it expect this? In HLSL, I, it, okay. So I just forgot the semicolon here. Uh, let's try it out again. Ah, I still have a breakpoint here. That's bad. Uh, the parameter is incorrect. It's probably because we again have some issues in our shaders. Or do we? So let's actually take a look at into the magic one uh, that basically throw this. So basically let's scroll down here until we find the function that's creating that GFX pipeline state stuff. All right, there it is. Put a breakpoint here. Uh, I just run it until there and we could inspect this before the error throws, hopefully. All right. So we want to check the this and we want to check the PSO description D3D and we want to check the render target count, which is one that is good. And now we want to check the render target formats. And is that really a new constraint? I didn't know that they really need to be initialized to unknown and not just be to any value you like. But seems like it is, so let me also... Oh, that's, that's nice. Now then let's scroll up until we get to the code where all of that is... Uh, uh, ...subscribed. Uh, where is it? RTV format. Number render target. Let's pull this in here. Uh, RTV formats. Just gonna assign in the XJA format unknown. I think we can have eight of them. So one, two, three, four. You're not happy with that? Hm, good. That's nice. So we're gonna do this the old way. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven. Good. If you don't like it, we're gonna do this like that. And you should be happy with that again. Right? You are. Good. We are presented with nothing than our window again, and that's good. So, now we can go in. Do we have any issues with uninitializing? No, we are probably cleaning up all the resources. So now let's hope that everything works out and we can render something. I have no idea, uh, since I haven't used this framework in a while, what we need to do, but we're gonna get to it. So what's sure is that rendering goes in here. So basically we wanna set up input assembler prepare. So we wanna prepare what we wanna do with our input assembler. First we need a vertex buffer view. Um, we wanna actually have this with a vertex buffer view, an index buffer view, and a topology. We don't need the topology, just a vertex buffer and then the index buffer. And for that we basically now need to take our Zuzan and get our mesh from our Zuzan or a mesh. 
And we're going to take this by implementing a new function in the model context here. So we're going to have a, which one I'm looking for? I'm looking for the mesh info. Uh, get mesh info. And for that, we want to have a model info. Model info. And we want to have a an index, which is by default going to be zero. All right. Now let's implement this function. And basically what we want to do here is we want to check. Uh, it's an RTR mesh info. Always forget about that. So basically what we want to do is we want to check if the IDX is smaller than our model info dot uh, count or basically we want to check if it's bit a bigger equal and then just gonna straightly throw an std exception there and say model or mesh index out of bounds like that so check offset and then what we basically want to do is we basically want to re return the mesh info from my set so i have sets of models and I want to take this at the index, but not that index, is it? I think it should be work like that. But we're not going to plainly start off that. We're going to take the the index and we're going to add the other index of that to basically return this info. Like that. Good. Now what we can basically just do is we can say auto mesh is equal to Suzanne or MDL context get mesh info for our friend Suzanne. And now basically we can say, let's actually give this a proper name, mesh info, a proper type, mesh, and then we can say mesh dot uh, yeah, vertex buffer, create vertex buffer view. We're just going to take the size of a vertex, which is just going to be size of our basic rendering vertex. Because it's basically a bit more robustly written than the rest. And we also want to get the index buffer and we want to create an index buffer view. And the index size is going to be the size of an unsigned int. And then we should be ready to go. Basically, we're going to... Uh, bind the mesh. And now I want to draw indexed, which is going to be automatically detected by the comment list since we prepared with an index buffer. The comment list will know that we can now draw with index indices. And we're going to get the, the index count from the mesh. Right, like that. I don't know if this is enough, but we're going to see. Probably we should see nothing or a crash or anything. Uh, at least we get nothing. That's always good. Do we get some error messages from DirectX? No. So we either forgot something. Let's see if we actually hit this. Yes, we hit it. So we either forgot something uh, or it's, it's actually right. This can actually be right. I'm going to show you in a sec. So we want to open this up with Pix and see what Pix is going to tell us about that. All right, so now I'm into Pix and I'm going to print a frame. And let's see how this frame looks. Or looks inside of pics. I know how it looks. Um, so yeah, let's go into pipeline. Start the analysis, which is going to take some time. Oh, I'm not allowed to do anything. Uh, did I not start it as admin? Do we still see something? Let's see. Does our input assembler see anything? Position semantic not found. Interesting. I do see data in it, though. In our vertex buffer, I see data. That's good. And I also see data in our index buffer. So the data is correctly on the GPU. Uh, but I don't see any output. How does the shader look like? Yeah, pixel shader. That has all been loaded well. Do we have a viewport bound? We have not bound the viewport and we don't have a scissor rectangle. So this is an issue. So let's quickly fix this. We need a scissor rectangle and a viewport. And also I'm a bit intrigued why it's not accepting the position. 
SV positioned. Isn't that how it's been spelled? Is it really required to have it caps? I don't think so. Let's see uh, the official DirectX documentation. It's exactly like that. So that's okay. So we just maybe need to bind a, uh, a viewport. So bind viewport list uh, RS uh, RS prepare. So there's the viewport. So let's quickly craft one D3D12 viewport D3D12 viewport viewport VP 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 dot top left x equals zero top left y equals zero width is gonna be something height is gonna be something um, min depth is gonna be 1.0 and max depth is 0 0.0 and then this is just gonna be our uh, get width uh, not window handle width Window get height here, and now we should at least have a viewport and maybe see some stuff. Ah, yeah, let's see. It's a setting up. Oh, yeah, we see stuff. It's everything is white, and this is actually telling you that we are cor correctly drawing stuff. Because previously it was all black, and now it's all white, which means that we draw something. Uh, let's inspect this again at PIX, because we're not going to get to a state where you can actually see Suzanne today. So let's take a capture here. Let's open up this capture and let's analysis this. Yeah, I don't need to have timers for performance, whatever. Draw. Uh, do I now see something? No. Why don't I see something? Vertex buffer. Uh, let's see, maybe we see something here at the output. No, because I do want to see something here. Why do you have it not found? Uh, manual specifying that. How can I? Hmm. Stream. It should be stream one actually. But why is it not detecting that? Okay, maybe I do need to uh, start this as admin. <sighs> All right, it just supports. It's SV position, but it is caps. So let's try this out if caps is gonna help. Picks. Pawn Z Ion. Of course, if we change it here, we uh, need to don't need to change it in the shaders. But we need to change it to the C code up here. And what we also need to do is we need to ah i know maybe what the issue oh, but no that's not the issue xyz w is zero but it's still accepting that that's that's awkward but uh we're gonna see in a sec why it does that we it might not does it because uh, i don't know all uh, right so pix is gonna be started as an uh, admin now just to be 100 percent safe i'm gonna quickly rebuild this And then I'm gonna start this here again. And let's see if we get something now. And we wanna start analysis. It's still gonna throw errors as hell, but at least it's doing something, which is taking a bit longer, which is always good. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it didn't throw an error? That is weird. Uh, let's take a look at the input assembler output now. All right, I see something. A cube? What? Ah. I consider that a fail. That is uh, not Suzanne? Not at all? Lol? How can it be a cube? Or is it just not showing it up? Uh... Ah, there we go. We need to ignore the W component. This is something that we're going to need to fix now as well. And now you're going to be talking. Now you can see Suzanne. So Suzanne is actually on the GPU. There you go. We need to fix the W issue now later on our code as well. I don't know why the GPU actually ignored it, but 
<sighs> who, who knows? Uh, you can see Suzanne is on the GPU. It was in the input assembler and after the vertex shader, uh, yeah, basically Suzanne was occupying the uh, everything. Oh yeah, there is she actually. There is she. If I ignore, if I if I disable screen space, she's shown. But because we are on screen space, we cannot see her. And this is also why everything is white because it's just just a big. It's just basically a big uh, triangle that's ending up on the full screen, <laughs> like, like here. All right, so let's quickly fix that one issue that we had with the position in our vertex shader. So basically, we want to uh, double check and make sure that the last component is actually set to one. We can do this in the shader here. But this shall not change anything. Oh, it does? Uh, ah, yeah, because we cannot create a five component thing. Uh, position. Ah, right, no, of course, we do need to make this differently. Uh, vertex. So basically, what I'm saying, um, I can just do this like that. X, Y, Z, W is equal to one. This is uh, that is why I did this like that actually to make it a bit more easy to use. Uh, yeah, but I forgot that I made it easy to use. There we go. Ha! Ah! Of course, it's a position. I'm an idiot. Position dot W. Right. Start. Oh god, now we are talking. Now we have Suzanne. Now she's. I was wrong. She's not occupying the full screen. She was just not showing because the W component was wrong. And now the W component is right. We can somehow see Suzanne, but not as we want to like to see her. We want to have 3D, but 3D involves math. And currently we are not doing math. Like, you don't see any math in here. And if we do math in here, if we take the position and correctly multiplying this with stuff. Uh, then we're actually gonna get Suzanne in three dimensions, but we need to correctly multiply her, of course. So basically we need to do three transforms, as I already told you in, like, the theory videos. Alright, so, Suzanne says goodbye. I'm Gui says I like to float over Suzanne. Uh, but we're gonna use it later on, of course, I'm Gui. It's always good to have it in your project, though. It's also very easy, it's like eye candy and... It doesn't isn't hard to integrate. Just copy two files and one line into Conan. Write a few lines of code and it's there. I'm going is there. It's so easy. So yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye.